Hi and welcome back to another art journaling video. Today I'm creating in my spiral bound collage journal and this is not really an art journal. It's um it's more of a sketch pad and it's a really cheap sketch pad from the action store with very cheap paper in it and that's the reason why I use it for collages and I'm starting here with a leftover paint paper. I always use usual papers as my paint palette and whenever there is leftover paint I just uh, smear it around or clean my brushes or sometimes I clean stamps on on them and these make the most gorgeous and versatile collage papers. And today I'm working with these and also with these jelly printed rice papers. Um, if you're interested in seeing how I make my own collage papers, I have a bunch of videos already on my channel and I will link up the playlist um, in the end cards. Here I'm just um, deciding which paper I want to use. This one is also a jelly printed rice paper but I want to have some more texture on it and I am going to stamp it just with a simple pattern. I'm picking a stamp from one of our pencil marks stamp sets and I'm working with Stay Zone ink as this is waterproof and it dries super fast on an acrylic surface. And here I'm just stamping parts of the paper. I will not use all of it, but I will just keep the rest for a future project. I really enjoy this process of arranging the papers on my page. I think it's quite a relaxing um, process and it's also very easy because you don't stick anything down at first. You just have a look and see and you can always easily change things up. I'm going to adhere these two papers now and I'm using a glue stick as always. You can use a uh, gel medium, of course, but I just want to work quickly and I don't like the mess the gel medium makes. To seal my spread, I will add a thin layer of clear gesso on top when I'm done with the collage process. And also sometimes in this journal, I don't add any gesso. It depends on what I'm going to do on top of the surface. I will now cut off the overlapping papers because then it's a bit easier to see what my next step could be.
I would like to bring in more of that painted paper, I think. Um, as I said, it's just uh, some experimenting with the, with the stuff you have. And I also recommend not to use all the things you have. If you have already a bunch of collage papers, just pick some of them out, maybe color-wise or um, just randomly and then use those because if you have too many different things that you can use it's very hard to decide which ones you want to use so i have just a little bit of papers laying next to me and i plan to use those of course sometimes during the process i then think about something i would like to add which is not on my desk and then i search for it in my stash and i I would use this. For my next layer, I have searched in my stash for some tissue paper. It's a very thin paper that um, is, is almost like tissue. It's a bit more sturdy, I would say. And I got mine um, from a packaging of overhead foils, which I use also for crafting. And these are laying in between. But I think you can also buy those tissue papers and you also get them often when you buy new shoes. And I always keep these kind of papers. They are also nice when you want to stamp onto an uneven surface. You can stamp to tissue paper and then adhere it to that surface so you get a better impression. And I love the transparency of that tissue because the background is shining through. And that creates some really interesting depth on your page. And here I'm just cutting out some more of these kind of U shapes. And I will stamp this tissue paper, not with black ink, with some kind of uh, matching, I think, yellowish ink. It was a bit contaminated by my stamp, so uh, it's not the, the ink color. It's kind of a mixture. And this stamp image I'm using here is, I think from our Mix It Up stamp set. And it's just a text stamp with some writing. And here you can see it's a mixture of that yellow and black because I did not clean the stamp had be, uh, the the stamp before. Um, I'm often a bit too lazy to do this, but it would have been better to clean it. If you are adhering tissue paper with the glue stick, you have to be very careful, of course. Um, it might work a bit easier with gel medium, but with the uh, gel, you might get a problem with wrinkling of the paper. So um, it's just you have to do the technique that you prefer, and I definitely prefer the glue stick.
I am now going to cover this page with a layer of clear gesso. Um, I'm still using the PBO gesso. It's, I cannot say it's my favorite because I have never tried any other clear gesso. If you have recommendations, I'm really interested. Um, this one is, it dries very transparent. You don't see that you have gesso on it. Um, but you can see I really only have a thin layer on top and I really love the texture it has. It's not super smooth. It is a little bit gritty and that gives me the poss possibility to go on top with any other materials and that's what I love about this clear gesso. There was some of the original paper on the right side and I am going in with some white heavy gesso to cover that up. It just um, gives me a good surface to work on because the paper in this journal is really, really cheap and not made for any kind of medium. I let the gesso dry completely and here I'm coming in with some Persian blue acrylic ink and I'm using one of these cheap Chinese brushes because I really like the fine tip and that it's a bit uncontrollable I would say so I get some really random and loose marks on my page and I just try to play intuitively and give the whole thing kind of an organic shape. I also want to have some splatters on the page and I just was thinking about which brush I want to use for the splatters but then I decided to use just that same brush and that worked out quite nicely and I kept these splatters to the area with the ink um, so that there is some more um, yeah, a more concentrated amount of splatters compared to the rest of the page. Whilst this ink is drying, I'm stamping my main image. I'm not sure at this stage which one I wanted to use, so I'm, I'm stamping two and I'm using images from the Sketchy Leaves stamp set. And I'm just working with black ink. I'm using the Versafine Clear ink pad because it stamps the best and gives you the darkest and best stamp impressions as long as you're working on a normal paper and not on a smooth surface, it dries also quite quickly. To color these images in, I pulled out my watercolors. Here I'm using the Mijello Mission Gold palette because I really like it color-wise. It's such a bright palette that I thought there will be the, the best colors to find for my, for my images. And I'm just trying to color them with similar colors to my spread so that it looks cohesive. And I will decide later in the process which image I'm going to add to my page. I will speed up the coloring process a little bit because it takes quite a while and I don't want to bore you. By the way, the paper that I've used here is the Kenson Mix Media paper. I really like it for stamping because it's super smooth and it takes watercoloring quite well.
Often I would prepare those images and then cut them out in front of the TV to have them always ready to go when I need some. And it's also great if you are not in a creative mode and you want to do something, then you just can prepare some of these kind of images for future projects. Before I'm going to adhere my image, I want to brighten up that dark ink area with some dots and I'm using a Posca paint pan in white and I'm just adding some white marks on top. I decided to pick the image with the bigger leaves because I liked it more color wise. There is a little bit of red in it like I have it on the background on the tissue and I think it matches the page quite well. I'm adhering it with some liquid glue because that works easier with that heavyweight paper compared to the, to the glue stick. For my sentiment, I picked a paper from a scrapbooking paper pad, which was um, kind of simple and matches my page color-wise. And here I'm stamping some of the images from the Mixer Sentiment um, stamp set from the clear version. And then I'm going to pick some words for my page. I'm cutting out the words I wanted to use and adhere them to my spread. Of course you could also stamp this to a paper where you have some double sided tape on the back. Then you have some quick stickers for your spreads. Yes and that was my page for today. I hope you enjoyed that video and you are inspired and I wish you a lovely weekend. We will hopefully see us next time. Bye!